What is up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included on the Frosty Pack. Episode 3 and trying to get some normality now. The farms are struggling because of lack of pressure, i.e. lack of a, a quantity of gases. There are quite a few gases actually that you can use, but the carbon dioxide is struggling. There's a lot of liquid carbon dioxide about, so what I'd like to try and do is get that bottled and dumped in there to see if that works. Using these machines, we can turn polluted dirt mud into polluted oxygen. I'm trying those out to see if that can help us a little bit. Although the aloe veras are quite efficient, the they don't seem to be working as well as I'd like because they obviously need carbon dioxide to increase the amount of oxygen and that means more people. This is my heating room. I'm trying to use two of the wood burners along with some temp shift plates to melt some of the ice into that room. I am surrounding it obviously in insulation so that if it does work, that heat will remain in the room that it's required for. Spoiler, it don't work or at least it don't work quick enough. When you're talking multiple tons, like 60, 70, 80 tons of ice at negative 40 degrees, of course, you need a lot of energy to convert that. We will, over the coming episode or episodes, do a bit of science on the quickest way to melt uh, the ice into liquid. Of course, temp shift plates made out of ice for those that are thinking about it. Yes, that's normally the way to do it. But of course, your environment is cold and they won't melt like they would in the normal games so in this you need a heat source in order for that to work and of course if the heat source isn't fantastically strong with energy i.e a lot of heat the melting of the ice when it does would cool down that immediately and it would stop because i've tried it so um yeah we we will do a bit of science there's a lot of stuff and things to come up so don't forget to subscribe to see it Try and get some scope now on the normality. You can see some of the walls there were quite warm. Obviously, the material I've brought in was warmer, not actually warmed up by the wood burners. So over on the right side, we know we're going to be using the same pattern going down. Uh, they are four high, of course. Normally, my bases or rooms are three though lower down here for things like power plants or anything like that we do need to make them slightly bigger because a lot of the machines especially the power plant machine uh, won't fit in a three tile room also making sure to keep all liquids i'm going to probably stop doing that after a bit because i'm finding that there are all random liquids everywhere and because there's a lot of ice melting and not just ice but multiple elements really that are frozen because of the map obviously um it will affect it now before we get in too much into this you can see i'm just going into the research to see where we're at and power plant is what i'm looking to do next of course the power plant and power spline will need to be separate from the base so that the heat doesn't affect anything because the power spline will eventually create a lot of heat Mods, I have added some extra mods. The mods are in the description and connected to the, um, the, the collection I've made. What I've actually found is that the mods, so far all mods that are okay for spaced out are working with the frozen pack. I assume only because the frozen pack is just a patch and it's just added a few things. It's not really changed the core game. So it seems to be working and a lot of those mods that are actually critical for quality of life like the zoom out mod, the uh, queued research, things like that are all working fine. So note to yourselves if you haven't already then make sure that you do pay attention to that. Of course I can't quantify the ones that I haven't added but the ones that are in the mod pack currently that you can see in this collection for this series are working fine for me so far with no issues no crashes at all as of yet and also no warnings on the mod manager I think I forgot to mention when I put in the machines to convert to polluted oxygen obviously I did get the filters in as well over here on the side where we're doing the and I'm doing air quotes farm farms 
I'm going to rip out all of the critter stuff and then in the center there as you can see I'm putting in some vents because the idea is whatever solution I find to get some gas in here whatever gas that may be it's proving difficult at the minute I'll be honest this is the, the beginning of this pack is quite difficult the whole cold everywhere thing is quite significant um, obviously there's ways around it multiple ways and again you can look at people that have played the beta versions and learn it but I'm not doing that I refuse to do that we've got to learn it ourselves by ourselves I mean myself or with your guys help so here I'm just going to dig a hole um, bottle empty any of the liquids I want in here which will be liquid carbon dioxide the idea then it will gas out because it doesn't stay as liquid for very long with the temperatures rising ever so slowly they are the liquid carbon dioxide is right on the cusp of sublimation anyway so it should be fine that will then gas off into this room as long as I close it off, which I have there, but I forgot to put a door in. That will then allow the crops to grow, we hope. In. So jumping ahead a little bit, you can see that on the bottom right there, there was the power plant. I say power plant, it's not a power plant. Uh, this is working. I put an extra or a second at least um, pump thing there because... It allows you to get a lot more of that carbon dioxide in there and we were struggling to start with the rooms are starting to come along I am going to replace where I can a lot of the wood walls floors roofs etc for any of the bricks or if it needs to be insulated I'll use the insulation tiles so we're using sedimentary rock or the like to do the job to allow us to put that wood back into for now anyway making sure we heat the base or the heat the places that we need to when we don't run out we also need to try and rush the research for incubators so we can get some of these eggs hatched because these guys are dying slowly they are going to get old they are going to die off and without replenishments we then know don't have the farm for the wood um, the wood from the foxes are vital at the minute and actually really good uh, efficiency wise for what they require and what they give is definitely worth it with some carbon dioxide now in here the farms are seemingly starting to kick off we are getting very close with the plums what i'm noticing though is the bamoths are starving to death they have around six days before they starve to death the crops have around four and a half to five days before they are completed and they can be eaten by said mammoths. So unless something goes wrong in the farm, i.e. we run out of carbon dioxide or the temperature goes wrong, we should be able to support them and they shouldn't die. Now, twofold with the power. I am, of course, going to use the automation because you'd be daft not to. It's simple and the smart batteries, if you've got them researched, it's good. We are using wood to power because there is nothing else, coals, etc. And, of course, you've got to remember that wood is vital to heating as well. So, automations is required so that you're only burning the wood when you need the power. All of the power burning fuels that we use in this game produce carbon dioxide as a byproduct, which is a good thing for us. Because then you chuck a load of aloe vera plants below, as I've done there, that will catch the carbon dioxide, turn it into oxalite, which turns into oxygen through sublimation. The Effectively then, we're turning wood into oxygen and power, which, in the situation we're in, I think is a valid option and certainly a valid uh, conversion. What I want to do though is just make sure that the heat that's generated by these generators is confined to the bottom of the map. I don't want it getting out of hand though. I don't expect it will but just in case a precaution is to build a roof and seal it so that the gases that are trapped with the generators that are likely to be warmer are subject to the aloe vera plants and for the reference we're going to need a lot more of uh, the aloe vera plants but i can say right now that this does work you are turning wood into power and oxygen and just doing a bit of exploring where i got some of the 
Bamath's Frob, we can see we've actually uncovered now the new plant, another new plant called the Bon Bon Tree. The Bon Bon Tree is a source of wood, of course. Uh, it is a tree after all. But also, as you can see with the flowers that are growing off the branches, they produce pollen, or at least the tree produces pollen. Nectar, yes, nectar. The tree produces nectar, and for every branch with a flower, it increases its production. The nectar is extracted from the tree via liquid pumping, or sorry, liquid pipe. So very similar to in the real world where we get resins and stuff from tapping trees and saps. Uh, it comes out as a liquid, but of course you can cut the tree down and use it as a source of wood as well. The little seal pups that you can see around it, the seals, they convert the nectar from the tree into ethanol. I don't believe at the minute that that is something I'm interested in. There is plenty of ethanol around for now. The fertilization required for the bonbon tree is snow. So nice and easy, we've got plenty of that. So what I'm gonna do is first of all, get to them, get to the trees, get them uncovered, get the seeds uncovered, look at what I need and then we'll get them chucked into the farm as well below the plums that we're growing we'll probably look to get some nectar just to see what it is what it does etc um, and then look at seeing what we need to do to get a wood farm in the future caitlin here is going to be really stupid she keeps running to one batch of oxygen to breathe she is suffocating of course uh, she then changes her mind, as you'll see in a second, and goes somewhere else because it's obviously moving. She's chasing a singular tile. I tried to get her to run back to base. She refused, so she's dead. So, Catalina, you're dead. Rip, but it's your fault. I don't feel bad about that one. And yeah, if you put the Loomis Quartz light crystal things in storage, they make the storage glow. That's quite cool. Um... Well, I do anyway. I think it's quite cool. Also, uh, spoiler alert-ish, they are fantastic lighting for use with crops and the like. Uh, and they don't give off heat or use electricity like the light bulbs do. So stay tuned for that because they actually become a game changer for me in terms of farming. And as the bonbon tree or that whole left-hand side exploration channel sort of thing that I've made is quite open, I am now restricting areas. So you can see shrinking down the tunnels to two tiles high, enough for the duplicates and also a lot easier to control gases. And then putting in some airlocks to make sure that the gases we are creating, i.e. oxygen, are where we want it in the base. But I will then allow it to go onto this channel because what's actually happening is as soon as they leave the base where you can see them now and they go left off the screen, they're holding the breath. Uh, then getting to all the way over to where that bomb on tree is and doing anything, by that point they're already suffocating. So there's a lot of progression we need to make. Yes, we could look at gas masks, but I do not have anywhere near a decent supply of oxygen to support those. And Atmo suits, uh, again, but even more so, we have nowhere near the right amount of oxygen to support that. In terms of duplicates, I'm going to start increasing them because with every duplicate, we of course do get carbon dioxide. That carbon dioxide is turned back into oxygen, so there is a sort of limit there that's going to break it, but at the minute, I'm comfortable with it. Of course, we have nine at the minute. We need at least 12 to complete the game. 12 duplicates with 16 mood buff, I believe it is, and a monument, and I'm pretty sure there's another factor as well, but I really hate it when it gives you warnings for things that you can't even see or haven't uncovered. I don't know what that's about, but anyway. Uh, and then the base is slowly converting over to brick and stone with all of the wood being put back into storage. 28.3 tons of wood at the minute, but we're going to get a lot more the bonbon tree i'm hoping is a good source of wood i'm not convinced that the nectar is uh gonna be something that we need loads of however 
it is, it turns out, a plast... I can't remember the word now, but basically a plastic thing. So instead of using petroleum through plastic into plastic, and then obviously we know that that creates loads of heat, which always bugs me, which is why I use Drecos, you can actually turn the nectar into plastic using the plastic polymer press. So that is an option. But we'll probably need a lot of farms. And likely what I'm going to do is go over the top and have probably, say, five or six tree farms. Uh, two of them for resin, uh, nectar, and three of them for wood. Maybe. We'll see. Let me know in the comments if you know something I don't on their maths and what else we've got. Of course, the foxes are a great source of wood as well. Uh, but they're not as quick as the trees. So it does depend on that. Research-wise, again, ignore me at the minute. I'm just looking at what is. I can't really figure out what I want to do next. Um, but when I install the mod in the next episode, it will likely be for queuing it. I just queue everything that's got the first and second research. You can see, so columns uh, two, three and four. I'll just set them all uh, because the research is pretty quick. We've got two dedicated researchers. That at the minute aren't really doing anything because I'm not keeping up with it because I'm not used to having to select them one by one. As you can see at the bottom there, we have lots of oxalite ready to go. Now, of course, the oxalite, you don't want them to take it off the plant and drop it there because that will stop that process working. Oxalite will force out the carbon dioxide. So it's always a good idea to make sure that if they are collecting it, that they do collect it and it is a level 10 job or 9 to get that oxalite to go to a sconce or to a storage facility in your base where you have it like I have here. Due to the large distances I've built in the base, I have unlocked the sweepers. The sweepers, of course, are the modded ones that we had in the previous series as well. And they're able to go through walls, so I'm using them to do so in this. The idea is that I've got one for each of the farms just to make sure that the eggs get put into storage and are not left in the farm because that does count to the moods one down at the bottom here that's making sure it's dealing with all of the ice that i've collected and then one in the kitchen i have this guy set to max so he is our engineer that can do that he's the only one so it does take him a while doing things like the uh, conveyor belts and stuff will take him ages because it's just one duplicate but we haven't unlocked them yet anyway so that doesn't matter but the idea here is that where I get really OCD uh, with keeping the floors clean, because it really does trigger the crap out of me, that's what they're doing, basically. They're just making sure everything's put away. Now, they will also help when you build something. If you have the resource in range, they will grab it from storage and put it down, which is good. So it just helps the duplicates uh, reduce their stress levels and makes it easier for all of us the stress levels being reduced on the duplicates is good because the whole point of this playthrough to complete it is to make them as happy as they've ever been i don't think i've ever got them anywhere near 16 morale but we'll have to wait and see maybe we're gonna have to make some fancy gourmet meals to do so that guy has got serious movement issues um and it's gonna likely be the death of him but there's not much i can do because i'm not gonna restrict him to areas that aren't a far away from the base because everybody's got to pull the finger out and do their jobs now a lot of people are suffering over here and they're going over here to collect things that i'm not that bothered about i mean this guy's come all the way over and put himself in a with a few debuffs mood debuffs so that he can collect some abyssalite that is not worth it so what i'm going to do is set one of those doors to not allow them to go to the left or west of the map um, and it will just restrict them from going there unnecessarily and allow them to actually do more useful things in the base like converting the farms. Now as you can see I am already planning that at the minute I'm doing the math on how big are the trees, how big do they grow, how tall do they grow, how wide do they grow so I know how big to do the farm. I didn't figure it out so I made it up. For reference though, they don't grow very tall at all. You can see they only actually get to three tiles. Um, so that's easily planned for a farm. The width, however, you need to give them at least a tile either side of where the trunk is. So you need them to be three wide as well. So a tree, a bonbon tree needs nine spaces, three by three. 
if you plant them next to each other, which you can do, you can plant them directly at the side of each other. Uh, all that will happen is the branches won't be able to grow. So if you want to get maximum efficiency for the nectar, you need all of the branches. So you need them in a 3x3 three three area. But to be honest, the same goes with the wood as well. Because the maximum efficiency for growing wood, you want all of the branches growing too. Now, as far as I'm aware, the branches for wood is simple. You just grow them and harvest them. If you want nectar, the branches and the flowers on the end have to have light. Which is why when you see them growing in the wild and they're doing very well, there's always uh, shine bugs around them. That light source is then creating the nectar. Without light, they won't produce nectar, but they still will produce wood. And while I then finish off getting this farm done, of course, it's going to have to be capped off as well. The carbon dioxide is leaking because we've opened it up a little bit too much. The liquid carbon dioxide will have to be put in another way. Um, hopefully, carbon dioxide from the power plant um, will suffice to keep us going for these. In the meantime, though, we are at the end of the episode, so you'll have to come back to the next episode to see how we get on on domesticating the bonbon trees. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like. Any comments are welcome. As always, don't forget to subscribe. Take care. Goodbye.